What is carbon monoxide poisoning? Well, first of all, it's carbon monoxide, CO, is a poisonous gas. And the trick here is it is colorless, odorless, and tasteless. And it can literally kill you uh, or cause very severe uh, symptoms. And we're going to look at those symptoms in just uh, a minute. But, but people do die every year from this. Um, fortunately, not as much from airplanes, but from folks in close proximity to a combustion engine or and, and an improperly ventilated uh, area or space. Most are accidental. It's it's known as a silent killer because again, it's it's colorless, odorless, and tasteless. Carbon monoxide is a gas and it's a byproduct uh, of combustion. And and when you inhale carbon monoxide, which again you can't smell it, it is very quickly and efficiently absorbed into your bloodstream. It just absorbs. It attaches to your hemoglobin in your blood 200 times better than oxygen. And, it, and essentially it takes over your bloodstream and it smothers out uh, the oxygen, basically suffocating you uh, from the inside. So not good. Now, how does this happen in aviation? You know, when, when are you more at risk? Obviously, there's an engine. Well, the risk of carbon monoxide poisoning in airplanes is much higher in cold weather. Why is that? Because most light aircraft are heated by uh, air that's circulating around the exhaust pipes. It's, it's kind of like the old Volkswagen Beetles, if anybody has got me on that. Um, so, so you have your exhaust, and then you have a metal shroud okay, surrounding it. And that shroud captures the heat, and then it and delivers it to the cabin. So when you pull cabin heat on, it's sourcing from around the exhaust pipe. And, and if the exhaust piping is compromised, even the sm tiniest pinhole leak that carbon monoxide is going to go where it's going to enter into the cabin anytime you use cabin heat. It's kind of interesting. The, the NTSB has even found that some planes that were involved in crashes where, where they detected carbon monoxide had just even recently passed inspections, meaning that the compromised exhaust system just went unnoticed. In fact, not to make you nervous, but, but just to put a little more context into this, on March 1st, 1996, a Piper aircraft uh, crashed shortly after takeoff, Pittsburgh, Kansas. The plane suffered severe damage. Fortunately, the pilot and passenger were, were okay. They, they actually reported no injuries. But the pilot reported that both she and her passenger had become uh, incapacitated after takeoff. And they were taken to a hospital for testing and, and, of course, both tested positive for carbon monoxide. And yet, the logbooks and records show the plane had just passed an annual inspection four hours prior to takeoff, and nobody found the holes in that exhaust system. And the NTSB said that the cause of the crash was inadequate annual inspection, along with a deterioration of the of the muffler. That's why it's so important to take your plane uh, to a trusted, tried and true mechanic and make sure that that inspection is done well on every single uh, annual. So as I said, I mean, carbon monoxide isn't a major cause of aviation-related accidents, unlike weather-related or pilot error, but they do occur. And you could have a slight carbon monoxide leak, and that kind of low exposure might just result in some symptoms that, you know, you kind of write off as just a little air sickness or just feeling a little funny or a little off, but it might not be you. All right, so let's look at some symptoms of carbon monoxide uh, poisoning. This is uh, kind of sobering, starting from the bottom, the green area of this arrow going up. Apparently less than 10% uh, carbon monoxide in the blood. You're not going to really experience much, if any, uh, symptoms. But from about 10% to 20%, you might get a little bit of nausea, feel a little in your stomach funny, uh, slight headache. But you go from 20 to 30, and now you're kind of feeling a definite headache. You're getting drowsy. Uh, you might even feel dizzy. You might feel that you're breathing a little fast. Keep going up and you see it impairs your judgment. You have problems breathing. Um, seeing your vision is affected. Your headache is, is excruciating. 40 to 50 percent. You get vertigo. You, you have loss of coordination. Chest pain. You, you might uncontrollably slip into sleeping. And then above that, seizure, heart attack, and even death. It's something to take seriously and err on the side of caution and have precautions that you follow. And realize this, susceptibility to carbon monoxide poisoning goes up. It increases as altitude increases. Why? Because there is less oxygen available. 
All right, so what are some of the things we can do about it? Um, well, number one, it's a really good idea, and I think every aircraft ought to have a carbon monoxide detector. Some are built right into the modern aircraft platform, um, but otherwise you can pick up these things. They're not expensive, and you just kind of put a little sticky thing right on your uh, instrument panel, and it just turns a definite color if there is carbon monoxide in the cabin, and you can just see that. The other thing to realize is, remember, where it really comes in is through the heating system through the exhaust system and so when you expose yourself to cabin heat that's the time you really need to be thinking I would always train my students anytime you pull the cabin heat on I want you to think carbon monoxide I want you to be watching the carbon monoxide detector I want you to kind of sense what you're, you're feeling your symptoms you might even cycle it on and off a little bit maybe flood with some fresh uh, cabin air if you need to especially if you start feeling some symptoms what do you do close that heat source off and open up all vents and flood uh, that cabin with fresh air so that's carbon monoxide uh, poisoning